Hey everybody, Eric with Ready Motorsports in Salt Lake City with you. Uh, we're excited, we want to make a video to show you a new system we have coming out right now. Uh, we've had a lot of interest in developing this based on all of our Holly Sniper single barrel 34 pick replacement EFI systems. They've worked out really great. Uh, so we had a lot of questions on when are we going to do a dual carb system or can we do something for a Type 4 or a Type 3. And those vehicles don't have provisions for manifold heat or higher performance engines. So here we have it. We've been working on this for months. Uh, we've got one system running in this Porsche 356 right now for a uh, you know, number of months, dialing that in and it works great. Uh, so what we've got going is we've got dual throttle bodies, IDF pattern. Uh, we've got CB performance, high quality, hex bar linkage, all cast aluminum, no flexing like some of the other linkages you get. Uh, idle control valve to help it target the idle speed that it needs. Uh, fuel line, vacuum line, fuel systems all included. All the clamps, the brackets. Uh, touch screen, three and a half inch display. Extension cables, the wiring harness, the battery terminal leads. And then of course the ECU that is based on the Holly Terminator X system. We've loaded all of our own software into it. We've provided a number of tunes based on idle requirements for air fuels, things like that. And it's as easy to switch as on the display, a few touches of the screen, you pop a new tune into it and you're gonna find the exact one that works with your car. You don't need to hook up a laptop. You don't need to know EFI to install this. We've done all the hard work. We've got about 15 years of EFI experience on air-cooled VWs. Uh, we've run some pretty good numbers with our own cars. Uh, we've done some stuff on the salt flats that we're pretty proud of. And so we've taken this whole, you know, years of knowledge, developed it into this, something that we want you to be able to just bolt on, turn the key on, fire it up, and let it start tuning itself. This is one of the only systems out there uh, right now, and I think the only system for air-cooled VWs that I can think of that is a true self-learning EFI system. It doesn't require a laptop. It doesn't require anything of you in that regard. Just fire it up, start running. It will physically tune that EFI map. The fuel map will change. It's not just closed loop exhaust gas uh, correction. It is an actual fuel map changing learning system. And it does it all while you drive. So you're not driving around with a laptop. You got a buddy holding it, doing whatever. Get in, start driving it, and it's going to start dialing it in. The closed loop that it has gets it so it runs while you're driving it, but in the background, the learning runs and it starts changing that fuel map. And we're gonna go through a few of the components so you can get a better view, a better idea of what everything does and how well it works, and maybe put some of the, the nervousness of going EFI to rest. Uh, some of the questions you might have. Uh, you're gonna really find out that you could go EFI you can keep your car looking pretty much old school. It's not gonna look like a science project in your engine bay. It's pretty easy to hook up. We've taken a lot of the guesswork out. We've made it so you can pretty much install, start driving, come check it out. It's gonna be cool. Okay, so here's the throttle body or most of the hardware of the system. Uh, the throttle bodies we're using are made to mimic a Weber carburetor. Uh, pretty spot on. They've got a fake accelerator pump on them and everything. Uh, it's for the classic car guys that really want to keep things looking, you know, vintage and stock like you want. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't work. It's not anything. But the nice part about it is the injectors are built inside the throttle body where the float bowl would normally be. So you, you can see them, if you look right there, you can see where they're cast into that, where they just spray down into the intakes. Uh, so you don't have a fuel rail, a bulky fuel rail in the way, you know, either squeezed between the shroud and uh, the carb or you know out here on the side of the manifold you don't have any of that you can still fit this in your engine bay just like you can a weber carburetor so that opens up possibilities for uh, type threes and anything else that's just really tight fitting in there we can do shorter manifolds for type threes shorter air filters get it all fitting under the lid just like you want uh, and you're going to be able to rock and roll that way we've got the idle air control ports done and installed ready to go you just have to plumb them into the idle air control valve you've got your port here for your manifold air pressure sensor built into the ecu so you're good there everything is dash 6 am fittings so real high quality stuff there you don't have to worry about that uh, you've got of course all the linkage pieces 
ready to go, quality. And then you've got your idle air control valve with its own air filter. So what that basically does is it installs between the carburetors, mount that on the firewall, run your hoses to it that's supplied to it, and the EFI is gonna target an idle speed by opening this valve and providing air past the throttle plate. And that is, you know, you get off the freeway, say, real hot summer day, and things want to idle a little hot normally with a carburetor, this, you know, your fuel's still going, you're not vapor locking, because it's EFI, but it's also gonna open up this bypass valve, which simulates throttle plates opening, and it's gonna keep that idle right where you want. And we programmed it so it idles a little higher when it's cold, just like a choke, and when it gets warmed up, you're gonna idle lower at a normal rate, but we've also got set, so if you get a little extra temperature on a real hot day and you come off the freeway, we bump the idle back up to help keep that oil light out, get the fan speed up, and just get some of that heat out of the system. Uh, it's a very good system, easy to hook up. Uh, there's, there's a little bit uh, difference. These screws are no longer idle mixture screws. These are actually bypass screws to change your idle speed. So you're not gonna actually open the throttle plates to adjust idle. You're gonna open up bypasses to make it happen. Uh, but other than that, for the most part, if you can tune a set of dual carbs, you can install and start running this. It's all very similar. Uh, you're going to adapt to it very quick. Just some things do a little bit different than others. But other than that, it's super easy to hook up. I don't want to say it's easier than a set of dual carbs. You don't have to rejet. You don't have to do any of that. But anyway, this is our system here. This is the 914 slash bus system. But we can do any manifold setups for type 3s, type 1s. You know, shorter manifolds for type threes, the whole nine yards. We've got a system for everything. We can also do IDA throttle bodies that mimic the original look of a Weber IDA. So you get that cast aluminum look. It looks just like an IDA. You're gonna have the big velocity stacks. You know, so if you got the cow look and you want to look cool, but you want some EFI, you're gonna be able to keep that classic cool look to your car without making it look well, like I said earlier, like a science project where you've got, you know, wiring everywhere and fuel rails everywhere and just all sorts of stuff. You know, you hide your idle air control back on the back side of the fan shroud, on the firewall so you don't see it, or down under by the transmission if you want. There, this doesn't require any uprightness to it. You can mount it in any position. Whatever works for your car, it's going to work. Uh, so hardware-wise, we picked what we consider the best we could find, uh, easiest to fit, we're very excited for this. This is going to work excellent for you. All right, here's the fuel system that you get with your kit. Uh, we've got everything you need to get it installed. You've got a high pressure fuel pump. You've got a post filter that acts also as the regulator for the system. You've got a pre filter before the pump. You've got all your hose clamps that you need. You've got some spring loaded clamps for everything from the tank to the inlet of the pump. Then you have high pressure EFI clamps for everything after that. You've got your tank outlet that screws onto the stock VW gas tank. You've got a dash 6AN return fitting that uh, you'll weld into the bottom of your tank. You've got all your AN fittings that you need. You've got everything that's going to attach to your fuel filter regulator. All AN billet, nice high quality. You got vacuum line that's going to connect your uh, manifold air pressure to, you know, from your manifold to the ECU. You've got your large 3 8 vacuum line that'll be your idle air control to connect your manifolds to where you mount that. And you've got all the fuel line you need. You know, high pressure, 300 PSI, 3 8 fuel line. It'll supply a ton of power if you need it. It's gonna do everything you need in that regard. Pretty much everything you need to connect your fuel system, you're good to go. Now there are some people that We'll install uh, CB Performance sells a T that goes on the bottom of the tank and you just loop the fuel through that so you don't have to weld this bit again. I can't say that I recommend it, but I can't say that I don't like it either. I've never run one, but I don't like the idea of fuel just running through a loop. Uh, I think it just gets the fuel hot and I think it could lead to issues on a hot day. So we do recommend you re weld the return into the bottom of the tank so you can use the fuel tank as a uh, capacity for the heat that's going to develop in the fuel running through that loop the whole time. Uh, that's what we recommend. If you want to stray from that, that's up to you. That's your call. We provide what you need to do it the way we recommend, but everything for the fuel system is there. Fuel line, you'll have one line going into the engine bay. It'll feed up to one carburetor. It'll come off of that carb to feed the other carb, just like an old Delordo system. You know, Delordo's had the one carburetor with the 
the inlet and outlet that fed the other carburetor. It's gonna work like that. So your engine bay is not gonna have a ton of weird fuel lines and fuel rails, things like that. It's gonna still look pretty much like an old school hot rod VW. You know, there's not gonna be a lot of clutter going on inside. It's gonna be easy to connect, easy to hook up. You gotta pull the engine for whatever reason. It's gonna disconnect just as easy as a set of carbs. We think it's gonna work out really great for you. We've simplified it as much as we could to make it as user friendly as possible. Okay, and here is the part that scares people the most with the EFI. All this wiring and all the electronics. We've made it as simple as possible for you and I'm gonna show you just how simple it really is. Uh, obviously we start with the ECU. Uh, based on a Terminator X, we reflashed the software, put all of our good bits into it. We put a couple of uh, different idle air fuel mixture tunes into it for you so you can select them on the display, find the one that works best for your engine. Uh, they're all a little different. So you can't do a one tune fits all, but you can pick which one is going to work the best at idle for you. We've got a 12 foot extension cable to the display that you can you know, put it in your glove box, mount it to the dash. You don't even have to hook it up if you don't want, but it's a good diagnostic tool down the line, anything like that. You can data log on this unit. It's got a built in SD card, so you can data log some stuff, load it into your computer, download the Holly software for free, watch your data log, see what's going on super easy now the wiring pretty easy still you've got your main battery power you know large you know 10 gauge leads going right into the ECU you've got a fuse built in so you don't even have to worry about all of that kind of stuff all that little stuff that leads you going to the, the hardware store to buy a, a $15 relay and this that and the other everything's built in this is more than long enough to run the battery where you want it run it straight to the battery. Uh, Holly is very strict on that. This needs to go straight to the battery. So don't shortcut it, don't put it to the starter, don't put it to the alternator, but you've got so much wire, it's easy to do. Here's the part that probably intimidates people the most. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. This is your main loom harness. It starts out with your two plugs that plug right in. They only plug into one place, you're not gonna mess that up. You come down the line, Here's your fuel pump relay built into the system, so you don't even have to plumb in any more relays. You've got another fuse for the system here. And the red wire with the white stripe, that is your key on power. So run that to your positive side of the ignition coil or anywhere else that you have key on power. As we make our way down the, the line of the loom, plenty of length to get that ECU tucked away under the rear seat if you need. We come to here, these are just unused plugs, something you'd see like for AC kick down, things like that. We're not gonna worry about that. We've trimmed out a lot of stuff out of these harnesses, so it doesn't get too confusing. But you do have this. This is the extent of your hard wiring that you have to do. You've got four wires that you need to connect. First one, you've got yellow wire. That's going to go to the negative side of the coil, or if you're running a CDI ignition, you're going to run that to your TAC output. Uh, the only thing you have to do is go in and turn off the, uh, the feature, if you have it, that sweeps the TAC when you turn the key on, because that's going to sense that as RPM and it'll just run the injector when you do that. So if you have a CDI, go to your TAC output and disable the sweep when the, when the key turns on. So that's all that is. Your green wire, that's your power to your fuel pump. So run a, a wire the same gauge straight up to the fuel pump. Then you've got power to the fuel pump relay. So run that, you can run that to the battery, to the starter main post, or you can even go right off the top of the alternator for that if you want. And then this is just a ground for the relay you know, bolt that down to a, sh a sheet metal screw on the engine tin or whatever you want, whatever's easy. It's, it's just a low current for the relay activation, but that's your four wires. So easy. You come down here some more. Here's your injector wiring. So these will split out, go to each throttle body. You plug those in. That's, that's your fuel right there. Then you come here, you've got your O2 sensor. That's built into the unit. There's no external wide band that you need to wire into the system, set parameters, anything like that. And the best part about Holly's wide band system is it warms up even on a cold day within, I would guess, I haven't timed it, but I'd guess within five seconds. It's incredible how fast these warm up and start reading and metering fuel. That's a great system. And then the last connections you have are these four. You've got your uh, TPS, that'll plug into your throttle body that's built into the throttle body already. 
you've got your coolant temp sensor, which is basically engine temperature. So you're going to want to put that sensor where the, and we provide all the sensors, uh, you're going to want to put that somewhere where it's going to be in the airflow of the cylinder head. You know, drill a hole through the tin, bolt it in, and plug that guy in. So it's getting air off the either the tops of the cylinders or near the cylinder head. That's just going to give the ECU what it needs for warm-up enrichment. Uh, you know, we have an idle higher when it's colder, ramps down to a normal rate. But if it gets real hot after, like, say, a summertime three-way drive, it's going to bump the idle back up, help keep the oil light out, get a little more fan speed, things like that. It's just a trick little system. Uh, then you've got your manifold air temp, and that plugs in right into the sensor. Uh, if you've got a Type 3 or you do the IDA pattern throttle bodies, there's no room to put the sensor in the top right here. So what they will end up being is the sensor will be just sitting kind of next to the air intakes, and it's going to read the air temp going into the carburetors that way. It's just kind of the, the give and take that you have. The last thing is your uh, idle control valve. That plugs right in. That's what's going to plug in. So hopefully behind the shroud where you don't see it so it looks all tidy. Pretty much all plug and play other than literally six wires. Plug it in, fire it up, run it, drive it, enjoy it. Uh, we've minimized the complexity, we hope, and we hope this video shows you actually how easy this is. Uh, we've hopefully minimized all your trips to the auto parts store. Uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit, you know, grommets, because every car is different, where you run the wires through. Uh, you know, just little, there's gonna be a couple tiny things like that. That's pretty much it though. I think grommets for wiring and maybe the wire for the fuel line or the fuel pump, but yeah, I don't think it gets any easier than this. It, it tunes itself. All you have to do is, is bolt it together like a hobby kit and you're ready to rock. And if you have any trouble at all, we can tweak the tune. If you've got kind of a weird combo that, you know, we can't be ready for everything, but if you have a weird combo that has some little nuance that you don't like, kind of hit us up. We can tweak the tune, we can email it to you, you load it onto your SD card from your laptop, load it into your handheld, select the tune, load it in, takes a couple seconds, and then drive it and see how that does. Uh, not very often have we had to do that with the Holly Sniper stuff, but every once in a while you get a, an interesting combo, who knows, you know, big cam with a small intake, or I don't know, but things happen, and uh, we can tweak it, and we can email it to you, and. Uh, try different things and uh, but for the most part uh, compared to our sniper system very few times do we ever have to do anything like that it's been very very successful for us hasn't been a pain in our side at all uh, it works really well as long as you follow all of the instructions that Holly gives you to install it you're gonna have good success with this and you're gonna be driving something that will tune itself you know 10,000 foot at the ski resort all the way down to sea level you're not going to touch a thing. The entire time you drive, it is hitting target air fuels. No jet changes, no anything, no idle changes when you get high elevation, low elevation. It's going to take care of all of it for you. Uh, and that was the idea with this. Just simple, easy to install, and easy to let it tune itself, let's be honest. So I hope this answers a lot of questions that some of you may have had. Uh, if we get enough questions to do another video, maybe at some point uh, we'll do a video showing more detailed installation in a vehicle here at the shop. Uh, we, we've got to get one in here to do it first. But if we get something like that, we'll, we'll probably put more videos out and get more information out there. And, uh, you know, everything we can do to get everyone's mind more at ease and, and realize this stuff is pretty easy to do nowadays. It's not all DIY. It's not, not rocket science, that's for sure. But... Uh, Give us a call, send us an email, let us know if you're interested, uh, or let us know if you have any other questions. We'd love to answer those for you. You guys have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you later.